Hi, so in today's video I'm going to show you how I created this little frame. Now, this came about because I was actually looking for something else and I came across a video showing how to make this. Now, there was no sound, no written instructions, no subtitles, it was just a, a video. But I watched it a couple of times and from the video I worked out that they started off with a piece of card that was a square. So what I did, I took a piece of the 6x6 Gingham Gala designer series paper and I cut it into four pieces of 3x3 three three. and this is my, bro my prototype. And I was originally going to put it on the front of a card but once I'd made it and I put it on the card, it didn't look right, but I think it was because I was using a regular A6 size card, which I think might be known as A2 in other parts of the world. But thinking about it now, if you, this actually measures three by three. So I think if you put this on a square card, it would probably look a lot better. And I would probably do, maybe put it on a four by four. But I've decided that I'm going to make it into a kind of frame. So you can see I've got a, a little support on the back, which obviously doesn't match. But as I say, this is my prototype. So I'm going to show you how to make this. So first of all, let me tell you. I'll just bring that back in. So for the flowers on the front, I'm using the flower from The Amazing Life. And I love this set. And if you bought my April card class, this is the stamp set that I use in that private class video. And I have used it on other videos as well. So I'm using the flower from Amazing Life, which is retiring. And I'm using the For You from The Beauty Abounds, which is staying and will carry over into the new Stamping Up catalogue, which will be out on the 4th of June. You don't have to put a greeting in here. This piece of white, I'll show you, just sits in the back. This could actually be a photograph, but I'm just, for the, for the video, just using it as a little decoration. Now, just quickly I'll explain. The Stamping Up Annual Catalogue and the Spring Summer Occasions Catalogue both expire on the 3rd of June. The new annual catalogue will be out from the 4th. Demonstrators get to order from the new catalogue a month early. I've not got mine yet. It is on its way to me. So I will be able to order from that new catalogue in May. But the new catalogue, as I say, doesn't go live to customers until the 4th of June. On my website, there is a tab called blog. And if you click on that tab, you will find a post that I've done recently with links to all the products that are retiring from these two catalogues. So if there's anything that you do want, I suggest you go and grab it fast because the retiring products do sell out quickly. And if you do by any chance want Amazing Life, don't miss out, just go to my shop page, which there's also a link on my website and go and buy this. It's item number 148750. So I'm going to recreate it again using the Gingham Gala and this time I'm using Daffodil Delight. So these are the supplies that you're going to need in addition to the stamp set. A piece of 6x6, six six, which I'm going to cut up in a minute. Designer series paper. This is crushed curry, although it's going to be on the back, but the colours still match because, you know, stamping up everything does match, even if it's not the identical colour. This is six by two, and I'm going to score it, but I'll explain in a minute. A piece of white, this is regular Whisper White card, which is two and a half by two and a half. This is for this piece. And then, you need three flowers, which I've stamped in Memento ink. And that's the flower that I've used from the Amazing Live set. 
and I've already got the 4U mounted up on the other side. And to save a little bit of time, I've already coloured these in. Now I've used the watercolour pencils and I've used Daffodil Delight and Old Olive. So the colour of the flower matches the colour of the designer series paper, but the piece that's going to make the actual stand for the frame is crushed curry. And just to save some time, I've already coloured them in and I've got a blender pen. So I'll do the third one now and just show you how quickly and easy it is to use these watercolour pencils. So I'm just going to colour in the flower very quickly, just roughly with the Daffodil Delight pencil. And I'm going to colour the leaves with the Old Olive. And then I'm going to blend it all out with a blender pen, but I'll show you how it looks. See, I don't know whether you can see my pencil marks. So now I'm going to take my blender pen and I'm just going to smooth out the colour. You don't need to press hard, you just move the colour around. And then I'm just going to wipe it off on my scrap paper till it runs clear and I know that the tip is clean. And then I can do the same with the green. And that's all there is to it. And I'll show you again now. So I don't know how well you'll see now, but the colour is all smoothed out and it makes it look like, looks like you've coloured it in with blends. It's nice and smooth. You don't get the pencil lines. So they're the three flowers I'm just going to put on one side. So... Just bringing in my paper trimmer and I'm bringing in my piece of six by six and I'm going to cut this up into four pieces of three by three. So just move the score blade out of the way. So I'm going to cut it at three and at three and the same again. Now this trimmer is retiring and Stampin' Up! will be bringing us a new trimmer, but at the moment, we have no idea what they're bringing or when they're bringing it. So the blades were out of stock, but they will be coming back into stock, and I believe they're going to be available until September, and you buy the blades in a two-pack. So I would stock up on your blades. That's what I'm going to be doing to get the most use out of my trimmer. And then I'll have a look and see what Stampin' Up! decide to bring out and see whether I want to replace this or not. But I am going to stock up on the blades. So now I'm going to take one of my pieces of 3x3 three three and the side that I want predominantly, so the smaller check here, I'm going to face down. I'm going to fold it on the diagonal, corner to corner, and I'm going to use a bone folder and flatten it out. I'm going to open it up and then what you want to do is put your finger on this fold near the point and you're going to bring this corner in to, to, to meet this diagonal fold line. So just ease it over gently and then once you've got that in place, push that out. Now, I'm going to bring it towards me so it looks a bit like a kite. And this point, I'm going to fold on this point here where this piece is. So I'm just, again, I'm just going to tease it over, fold it over, and the diagonal fold is going to run down this edge that I've just folded in. And I'm going to burnish it again. Now I'm going to fold that backwards and burnish so it now looks like that. So that's that piece folded backwards and this is this piece folded in. 
Now I'm going to fold it over. So where this piece comes in and meets this line, I'm going to fold it over there, put it down and burnish it and give it a good burnish. So that's how you're looking so far. So now you can see the reverse side. So you've got small checks on one side and large checks on the other. And this is the reverse, so you can see the bigger checks. And then I'm going to ease this over along this line. And this is going to tuck under here. So I'm just going to ease it up with my bowl and folder. And then tuck that under. And then again, I'm just going to push it in and I'm going to burnish it. So that's what you've got. And you do that four times. So I'll do one more and then I'll do the other two off camera. So the side that I want predominantly up, I'm going to put face down. I'm going to fold it corner to corner. So that's point to point and burnish. Open it up, put my finger on this point and bring this over to this fold. And then burnish. Then fold this top point at this horizontal point here. And I'm just going to turn it around so I can see. And I'm just teasing it up with my finger. And you'll see your diagonal fold line and you want to line that up as a continuation line here. Burnish, open it up and flip it over. And burnish again. Then you're going to fold this over and burnish. And then again, just ease this up. and tuck it in. And you can just manipulate it with your fingers. It's easier to do it than it than it than I'm than I'm making it look because I'm trying to do it so you can see what I'm doing. So that's two. I'll do the other two and then I'll come back. Okay, so this is how you're going to put it together. You're going to put one corner you're going to get your other one and that's going to slide in there. This one's going to slide in there and that one's going to lock together there. So the first thing I'm going to do is get some glue and tuck that into this corner. Like so. Then I'm going to put some glue on this one and slide that into there. You can manipulate it in a minute. That's why I'm using wet glue. And then this is gonna go into there and this point's gonna lock into there. So we need glue on this end and this end. And if you use wet glue, you can manipulate it better. And just give it a press and it will lock together. Now, the piece that's two and a half by two and a half, this is a scrap. I'm going to turn it over and tuck that into the flaps on the back. And this kind of gives it a little bit more stability.
So that's how it's looking now. I've got my Memento. I've got my For You. I'll take that flower off there because I've already made mine. I'm going to ink up my For You. And I'm just going to pop that there. And then my three little flowers, I'm going to put mini dimensionals on the back. about with this it's not quite as square as I, I would like it and then I'm going to put these on the frame and then that way if you do want to put a photograph in there you can slide your photograph in and out on the back On this one, I've actually stuck one to this white section. So we'll add a few rhinestones to the centre of the flowers because, you know, why not? Give it a little bit of bling. And I'm just picking these up with my piercing tool. And this is another thing that's retiring this summer from the annual catalogue. But they have now got the take your pick tool, which is a stylus as well. And it's got that little spatula on the end of it. And it's got one of those sticky picky up things. So there's several things that are retiring from the, the annual catalogue. Um, but, you know, there are lots of new things to replace it. So that's how it's looking so far. So now, just gonna make my little stand. So as I say, this is six by two. I've scored it at one and a half, three and four and a half. And now I'm just going to fold and burnish it on the score lines. And then I'm gonna stick it together to form a triangle. So I'm just gonna put glue on one of these flaps. Again, I'm using wet glue. Um, I just find anything 3D Tombow is the best. All these things are all available in my online shop. You don't need a lot of glue. Just put that on the fold and fold that up and then hold it together. That makes your little stand just give it a burnish and then what I did I just put mini glue dots or glue dots on here to hold this in place so I'll get my glue dots I just put two on it I don't know if you can see that there's two little glue dots And then I'm just going to kind of bring it together and fit it kind of fairly centrally. And that's the little frame. So I hope you like that idea. You could, as I say, make these any size. So long as you start off with a square piece of paper, any size you want, but you'll need four of it. So the bigger you start off, you could do four at six by six and that would give you a bigger frame. But I just thought I'd try it with, you know, one sheet of designer series paper, six by six. I think these would probably be great. You could get quite a lot of these out of a pack of six by six and they'd, they'd probably be great for little craft fairs and things like that. You could put sentiments on them. You could change this out for a picture or a photograph, anything really. But as I say, I came across it by accident 
and I just thought I'd show you how to do it. So please give the video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you don't already do so and I'll see you in my next video. Thank you.